morning, I'm Megan Ingley, and I'm here joined by Keith Jones, President of Hockey Operations for the Philadelphia Flyers, ahead of an exciting matchup against the Colorado Avalanche here in Ball Arena. Keith, I wanted to talk to you, though, a little bit about your role and how the first year, full year on the job is going for you. Uh, it's going well. The, you know, the most important thing is the team is playing well. Um, it's kind of, from a personal standpoint, felt natural for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why, but it's been... Uh, a great experience so far. We have a really good group of people to work with. Um, pretty excited about where things are headed. And your background in media gave you a unique perspective because you've been deeply involved with this organization as an analyst. What about that perspective, the deep knowledge, but also that media background has translated in your approach to the job? Yeah, I, I think it matters in our city. I think it's important that you know, we get the messaging out that uh, we include our fans and in everything that we're doing, try to make sure we're transparent and honest and available. And I think those are things that I appreciated when I was on the other side of it, like you are now, uh, having the opportunity to just, you know, sit down and have a conversation and talk about where the team is heading, what our focus is, and making sure that uh, we do it together. And together isn't just about, you know, those of us in our hockey operations department, it's our coaching staff, it's our players, and it's our fans. And it's really important that, uh, you know, we make sure that we recognize how important our fans are. And what was your relationship with Danny Breer like prior to this, and how has it evolved through this point? Yeah, it was always good. I mean, I covered him as a player, which was obviously great because the team was great during those years. And he was a very important player that you know, chose to come to Philadelphia, signed a free agent contract. So I always respected that part uh, about Danny. Uh, but then the work that he put in after and, you know, and going back to school and, you know, going step by step through different managerial roles within the organization and being available all the time, putting the work in. So I watched a lot of that from afar, spent a lot of time with him at alumni events. Uh, and got to know him as a person and always appreciated uh, the friendship before. And it's only growing more uh, since we've been working together and we're together a lot. So it's, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a pretty easy guy to get along with for sure. And to see him shed that interim title and become the general manager of this club, what makes him the right guy for that job? Well, he's really smart. Um, he's got a great sense of what's important in a player. Uh, he deals well with other people. He's very respectful. He is, um, someone that can manage up and also manage down, uh, making sure that the players feel that they're included, that they feel like they're part of something special. Uh, but most importantly, he's a good guy. And I, I think that's really gonna help our organization a lot as we continue to kind of take the next steps. And in looking at the next steps for the organization, there's obviously an emphasis on player development. Um, what has the club done to really lean into that area? A lot. Uh, we've added a lot of really quality people. Patrick Sharp being one of them, who you know won three Stanley Cups with the Blackhawks. He played in Philadelphia to start his career. Was a college hockey player. Uh, was not a given that he would become a star player. He kind of went through all the stages of what it takes to become a regular National Hockey League player and then become a star player after that. I think that type of messaging to younger players that are you know in the college ranks that are coming up. Uh, is really important. Uh, John LeClaire, another guy that also played college hockey, started in Montreal, won a Stanley Cup there, came to Philadelphia and really developed into a superstar. Um, but it wasn't a given for John to make it either. Like he went through all the steps. So I, I do think that there are two really important people that can add a lot to what we're trying to do. So there's been a real focus on player development. That's two examples. We have a lot of other guys that are contributing in that department. And we have a lot of young prospects that we're watching on a daily basis. So it's great to have those guys there and available to go out and watch them. One of those prospects is Mitch Cobb. I think to some people's surprise, he was still available at seven. And then the contract through 2026 maybe had people wondering about what the window for the organization looks like because you're sitting second in the Metro as it stands right now. Is there any chance that he comes over sooner? Uh, I don't think that's, well, there's always a chance, but it's not a focus. Uh, we kind of looked at it as an opportunity to kind of set the bar for where we want to be when he arrives and uh, we want to make sure that we're continuing to you know develop our own players over here but also 
um, give the players that are playing on our organization a chance to speed up the process. And our guys are doing it with the way that they performed on the ice. So we're watching him frequently. We obviously have a keen eye on him and look forward to his arrival, but there's not a real pressing rush on our part. Um, and that was part of our thinking going into selecting him. But we know what he is. We're pretty sure what he's going to become. And we're excited for when he arrives. And I don't want to neglect talking about the prospects that are in the pro pipeline right now. Players that have forced the club to make difficult decisions, like giving Bobby Brink NHL ice time and Tyson Forster. Um, what do you think has been the secret to their success being able to ascend to the pro level and be pro ready as soon as they have been? Yeah, it's been seamless for them. They're smart. I mean, they're really two players that play with a lot of hockey sense. Uh, Tyson's an extremely smart player with his stick positioning, his body positioning, his ability to get in areas to score, but most importantly is his willingness to defend. And that's always a tough thing for younger players when they're taking the next step. He has all of that. Didn't score early, but he's scoring now, and we, we knew that would come around for him. And for Bobby Brink, he's a gifted player. He's slippery. He's, you know, when you watch him, it doesn't jump out at you like Bobby's going to be an NHL star someday. But he just keeps climbing. Like he just finds different ways to make a, an influence on a game. Uh, players love him. They love hanging out with him, and uh, I think he's got a really bright future for us. I'm going to ask you some questions about culture a little bit too. And I asked you about your background in media, but I was curious how your background as a player, specifically your role as so, sort of a glue guy. You complimented a lot of high end players, Forsberg, Sackick, and Joss. And I was curious how that's obviously the type of role in a locker room that's really essential to winning, to have somebody like you that can complement and adapt high skill players as well. Is there any part of that can translate into management? I think it can. I think it's about, you know, recognizing what you're good at and then trying to complement what other people are good at. And I think when you do that, you can achieve great things and others can make you better at what you're doing. And I think you have to be willing to have A players around you. You can't be fearful of someone, you know, being better at something that uh, than you are. And I think bringing them together, making them feel important, making them feel like they're contributing in a positive way, but at the same time, recognizing that they're a part of something and that you're helping the big picture of the team eventually get to where we want to go. So I do, I do think there's a way that those type of qualities can help you, and it's a nice compliment to hear that. Uh, you know, you always wonder sometimes when you're playing, like that fine line of, you know, being a, you know, having a sense of humor and trying to bring people together and then also turning that into something positive on the ice where you keep people in, a, in the right frame of, frame of mind. So it's a challenge, but it's a good thing. How did you know it was the right time to make the leap? It, for me, it was in my broadcasting career, which I loved every second of it. Um, and watching the Flyers as closely as I have for so many years. It just felt like it was time to, number one, have a change of my own world, but also give back to the people that have been so good to me. The Flyers organization, number one, the fans of Philadelphia. You don't succeed in that city if you're not uh, accepted. Uh, they gave me a great opportunity to have a post-playing career in broadcasting, doing morning radio in Philly for many years, and then also through the, you know, broadcasting of the team's game. So uh, it's a little bit of both, but it seemed like the perfect time to, to make the transition, and so far it's been good. And I've often wondered about the player perspective. Anytime an organization rebuilds, how do you reconcile an athlete's innate desire to win right now with the future planning, you know, in terms of morale around the room? Yeah. You keep you, you keep pushing them to win, and we, we'll never we'll never not try to win a game. And players respect that. And you know, for them, it's an us against the world type mentality. Uh, whenever you're on a team, and everyone keeps saying, "Well, they're not very good. They're not. You know, they're, here's where they are in the revolution." As a player, you take that personally. And I'm not surprised that our players have performed well this year. I I do think it has bonded them together even more. Um, 
But the most important thing is they have a real appreciation for what one another is contributing to the team's success. And the more you win, the better you feel. So it's uh, there's some good vibes going on there. And that last question reminds me of culture again. And it makes me think of the Avs 48-point season. And they have first-year coach Jared Bednar at the helm. I wonder if, as an organization, you look in on that and derive any inspiration from where they were able to get to five years from that point in getting to a cup and getting to a point where their window is wide open. That obviously took a lot of patience from the Avs organization. Can you take any learning lessons away from that? Yeah, you absolutely can. And, and you want to study how teams became you know, Stanley Cup contending teams over long periods of time, like the Avalanche have on, you know, a couple of different occasions. Um, the Tampa Bay Lightning and how long they that sustains, you know, their Stanley Cup aspirations. Um, every team does it a little bit differently, but what the Avalanche did was admirable. Um, it, it did take a lot of patience. It did take risk. It did take, you know, a chance that you can lose some of your fan base as you, you know, are declining before you turn it back around. So what they did is extremely impressive. Uh, the players deserve a lot of credit for where they took it to. And now they're sitting in a position where they'll be fighting for another Stanley Cup this year. We want to get there. We want to be that type of team eventually. Um, but we do look up to teams like Colorado that have had that ultimate success. And a key to the Avs' success, in part, was having Jared Bednar at the helm. And that required a lot of trust in him because the results weren't quite immediate, but there was always forward movement. How did you know Tortorella would be the right Yeah, guy? you know, it, I, I've known him a long time uh, through my work in the media and then, of course, talking to him when he was coaching. But I also worked together with him on a set uh, on TSN in Canada for an extended period of time. So I knew him as a person. Um, I think that's the most important part. I think the players have to respect you as a person and understand that, you know, you have their best interests at heart, that your number one interest is getting the most out of each individual player. Sometimes that's pushing them really hard. And sometimes that, um, at the time, the player might not fully understand. He might take it personal. Uh, that's something I think that John's done a really good job of with our team is they like playing for him. They play hard for him and for each other. And I think that's something that we want to continue to uh, find success with. And um, yeah, I think he's a big reason why our team has been doing so well this year. Awesome. That's all I have for okay. you. Thank you so much for all your time. You were so generous. Yeah, I appreciate it. Was great it. To meet nice you to too. meet you as well. Thank you.